In the annals of history, many names resonate with power and conquest. One such name is Pedro Gutierrez de Valdivia, a man whose destiny was intertwined with the fate of Chile. Born in April of 1497, Valdivia hailed from Extremadura, a region known for its hardy inhabitants and extreme climate. His early life was marked by military discipline and service, as he enlisted in the Spanish army. This path took him to the war-torn landscapes of Italy and Flanders, where he honed his skills as a soldier and a leader. His courage and tactical brilliance didn't go unnoticed, earning him a reputation among his comrades and superiors alike. In 1534, Valdivia's life took a drastic turn. His military prowess had caught the attention of the Spanish crown, which had a new mission for him, South America. He was transferred to this new world, a land of unknown dangers and untold riches. There he served as a lieutenant under the command of Francisco Pizarro in Peru. Valdivia was more than just a second in command. He was a right hand to Pizarro, a trusted advisor in the brutal world of conquest and colonization. The experience in Peru was a crucible for Valdivia. It was here he learned the ways of the new world, the strategies of dealing with indigenous peoples and the pursuit of unimaginable wealth. It was also here that he began to dream of his own conquests, his own lands to rule. The seeds of ambition were sown in the fertile ground of the South American continent, and they would soon bear fruit in the form of an expedition that would change the course of history. Valdivia's time in Peru was more than just a chapter in his life. It was the prologue to a grand narrative, a story of conquest, power, and ambition. It was the foundation upon which he would build his legacy, a legacy that would forever be etched in the annals of history. Thus, Valdivia's journey from a Spanish soldier to a lieutenant in the New World was just the beginning of his story. In 1540, Valdivia's life took a dramatic turn. He led an expedition of 150 Spaniards into Chile, a land that was about to witness the indomitable spirit of a conquistador. The journey was far from a leisurely trek. Harsh terrain, unfamiliar territory, and the looming threat of indigenous warriors made it a test of endurance, resilience, and strategic prowess. Yet Valdivia and his men pressed on, driven by a potent cocktail of curiosity, ambition, and the promise of untapped wealth. Their first significant encounter with the indigenous people was a testament to their resolve. Outnumbered and faced with a formidable force of skilled warriors, the Spaniards nevertheless emerged victorious. How? They leveraged their superior weaponry and military tactics, coupled with a deep-seated belief in their divine mandate to conquer and convert. Victory, however, was just the first step. Valdivia had grander plans. He envisioned a Spanish stronghold in this new land, a beacon of civilization amidst what he perceived as wild, untamed territory. Santiago was born from this vision. In 1541, on the fertile plains of the Mapocho River Valley, Santiago was founded. The fledgling city was a testament to Spanish resilience and a symbol of their intent to stay. Valdivia's ambitions didn't stop at Santiago. He pushed further south, extending Spanish rule to the Biobio River by 1546. This expansion was not without its challenges. Resistance from the indigenous people was fierce, but Valdivia's strategic acumen and relentless pursuit of his vision ensured Spanish dominance. Valdivia's conquests in Chile were remarkable, but his thirst for expansion was far from quenched. His eyes were set on the horizon, dreaming of new lands to conquer, new wealth to exploit, and a legacy that would echo through the annals of history. Little did he know the real trials were yet to come, but that's a tale for another time. For now, let's marvel at the audacity of this conquistador who dared to venture into the unknown and emerged as the first royal governor of Chile. Returning to Chile as governor in 1549, Valdivia embarked on a mission to colonize the land south of the Biobio. The drive that had led him to conquer now channeled into establishing a firm Spanish foothold in the region. But this wasn't a simple task. The land was wild, untamed, and the indigenous Mapuche fiercely defended their home. Yet Valdivia was unyielding. As governor, he was not just a conqueror. He was a builder, a founder of cities. In the year 1550, the city of Concepcion came into existence under his leadership. 
Named after the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary, it was more than just a testament to his religious faith. It was a symbol of the Spanish presence, a beacon of the new world they were creating. His tenure as governor wasn't without its challenges. The colonizing efforts were met with resistance from the indigenous people. Valdivia had to navigate through this complex socio-political landscape, balancing the need for control with the necessity of maintaining peace. He had to ensure the prosperity of the Spanish settlers, but also deal with the growing unrest among the Mapuche. The governance of Valdivia was a blend of iron will and strategic diplomacy. He understood the importance of alliances and often tried to negotiate with the native chiefs. He brought in more settlers, encouraged agriculture and promoted mining, laying the foundation of an economy that would sustain the fledgling colony. Despite the adversities, his efforts began to bear fruit. Settlements grew, the Spanish influence spread, and the land south of the Biobio gradually transformed under his rule. But this transformation came at a price. The resentment among the Mapuche grew, setting the stage for conflicts that would later define his rule. As a governor, Valdivia forever altered the landscape of Chile. But his end was as dramatic as his life. His story serves as a stark reminder of the complexities of colonization and the indomitable spirit of those who dare to venture into the unknown, shaping the world as we know it today. In the midst of his campaign against the Mapuche, destiny played its final card in the life of Pedro Gutierrez de Valdivia. The year was 1553 and Valdivia was embroiled in his relentless campaign against the Mapuche, a group of indigenous people in Chile However, the tides of fortune were about to turn. During a fierce battle, the conquistador's luck ran out. Valdivia was captured. The once mighty governor and colonizer, the man who had changed the course of Chilean history, was now a prisoner. His captors were not kind. The Mapuche understandably harbored deep resentment towards the Spaniards who had invaded their lands and disrupted their way of life. They subjected Valdivia to a most gruesome fate. In a macabre twist of irony, the man who had come in search of gold was forced to consume the precious metal in its molten form. It was a painful and horrifying end for the once mighty conquistador. News of Valdivia's death spread like wildfire. In Spain, the news was met with shock and disbelief. The man who had been a beacon of Spanish conquest in the New World, a symbol of the seemingly unstoppable power of the Spanish Empire, was no more. In Chile, his death sent ripples of fear amongst the Spanish settlers. The man who had led them, who had built cities and established a semblance of order in this wild new land, was gone. And the Mapuche? They celebrated. They had avenged their people and had struck a massive blow against their oppressors. But their victory was bittersweet. Valdivia's death did not end the Spanish conquest. If anything, it only intensified it. Valdivia's life may have ended, but his legacy was far from forgotten. His death marked a turning point in the history of Chile. It was a stark reminder of the brutality of the conquest, the high price paid in human lives, and the resilience of the indigenous people. His name would continue to echo through the centuries, a symbol of ambition, power, and the indomitable spirit of the conquistador. In death, Pedro Gutierrez de Valdivia became a legend, his name forever etched in the history of Chile. This Spanish conquistador, who journeyed from the battlefields of Italy and Flanders to the untouched lands of South America, left an indelible mark on the region we now know as Chile. Valdivia's legacy is one of power and perseverance, a testament to the spirit of the era of exploration and conquest. His influence is evident in the very fabric of Chilean society, from the bustling city streets to the quiet rural areas. His actions laid the groundwork for the establishment of Santiago and Concepcion, two of Chile's most significant cities. Santiago, founded in 1541, stands as a testament to Valdivia's strategic acumen and ambition. Concepcion, established nearly a decade later, further extended Spanish rule in the region. Valdivia's governance was not without conflict, as the indigenous Mapuche people fiercely resisted the Spanish incursion. Despite the strife, Valdivia's rule marked a significant turning point in Chilean history. It heralded the beginning of an era of Spanish influence that would shape the country's culture, language and identity for centuries to come. 
The city of Valdivia, nestled in the southern reaches of Chile, is named in his honor. This city, with its rich history and vibrant culture, serves as a living tribute to the man whose spirit of adventure and ambition shaped the destiny of a nation. Valdivia's legacy is not merely confined to the borders of Chile. It extends beyond into the annals of global history. He is remembered as one of the key figures of the Age of Exploration, a period marked by discovery, conquest and the reshaping of the world as we know it. Pedro Gutierrez de Valdivia, a name that resonates with power, conquest and the indomitable spirit of a true conquistador. His story, like the man himself, is larger than life, a testament to the enduring allure of the unknown and the relentless pursuit of ambition.